Hindu Swarajya would probably look in, in its terms of in the Hindu Swarajya would probably look similar to a Japanese uh, kind of expansionist uh, world, uh, post World War II Japanese expansionism. In terms of uh, uh, in terms of the state itself, uh, you know, I have thought about this and people discuss. This is again, this is B. Huh? This is just my 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 personal, uh, you know, thought. And uh, uh, we have thought in terms of you know constitutional monarchy, and uh, the experience of uh, experience of constitutional semi-constitutional monarchies in recent times in India. Uh, you cannot get a similar ex expansion, but ex similar uh, uh, directly similar experience in India. But I would like to draw parallels between the experience of Travancore as a state uh, versus Japan as a state. Uh, Travancore before Marthanda Varma, the Travancore region was ruled by, was full of small principalities, feudal in nature and uh, most of whom were uh, traditional aristocrat, uh, dynastic aristocrats, the Rajas and the various Nayars and so on. And uh, before Varthanda Varma, the, there was no real ruler at uh, Travancore or near titular head. But after Martha and Varma, it was similar to the Maiji restoration in, in terms of the traditional feudal dynasties uh, see their importance uh, diminished drastically, especially the Etivital Pillamar, the dynasty, the eight feudal chieftains, Pillamar chieftains, whose uh, influence was drastically diminished in terms of in, in favor of a centralized uh, powerful monarchy. And what has our experience been? With this monarchy, uh, the it was always a progressive uh, region uh, uh, as compared to the rest of the country, and some of the very important uh, social changes which came about in India. I'll just take uh, one very important social change, which is the temple entry, which is where we constitutionally we are bound to give access to the temple to people from all parts of the society without restrictions. The, uh, the very first proclamation in India was made by the Travancore state, the temple entry proclamation in Travancore state and almost every state, every before and after independence, whether it is Mysore or the later presidencies, Madras, Calcutta and Bombay presidencies, which adopted it, adopted some aspect of the progressive temple entry proclamation from Travancore. If you look at uh, Dr. Ambedkar's experience, own experience, the people, uh, it was not uh, British or uh, any, um, you know, the uh, traditional British Raj which supported him in his endeavors. His, it was Shahuji Maharaj of Satara and later on the Gaikwad king of Baroda who supported him and uh, who helped him out when he needed certain financial uh, help. So, in terms of uh, progressive behavior, uh, the behavior of the states, traditional princely states, some of the pr traditional princely states. In terms of uh, universal education, Travancore was the, one of the earliest states to make primary education universal and accessible to all parts of society. And if you look at the noon meal scheme, the early precursor of the noon meal scheme was in Travancore state under Raja Chitra Tirnal and you should not of course, under uh, Sir C.P. Ramswami Ayer, who was the uh, Diwan and uh, the Raja Chitra Tirunal, the Noon Meal scheme was one of the earlier thing, early early schemes which was carried out and later on it was just uh, adopted in Tamil Nadu by the Kamraj uh, government and now it is uh, pretty much a standard thing which happens across every Indian state and this has been a game changer in terms of improving literacy levels, in terms of improving nutrition, in terms of improving overall quality of life of the Indian public. 